David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you the latest release from Narwhal in their luxury Ikaku line. That pen is called the Lan Yu, and it has a special custom flex nib as well that I found interesting. Uh, this pen was recently released at the DC Pen Show and has been selling very well. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Again, with this very special custom flex nib. Thanks go out to the good folks at Narwhal for providing this pen on loan for review. Um, I mentioned this during the review of the Yiyu, the first pen launch under the Ikaku brand, but Narwhal has recently uh, really grown as a brand over the last few years. At first, they offered lower cost entry level demonstrators. Uh, then they stepped up their game a bit with the Nautilus design made from ebonite or custom resins. Uh, they've partnered with a large number of retailers for exclusive offerings as well. But what I have here is the latest Ikaku offering. Uh, it arrives in this nice box. Um, it's not necessarily like soft wood like you've seen in some other boxes. It's more like a pine or a little bit of a harder wood. Um, it has Ikaku on the front. Uh, Ikaku is the Japanese word for narwhal. The lid lifts off and inside we have a little warranty card. And then nestled in this nice velvety soft material is a pen. This is the Ikaku Lanyu, which translates from Mandarin as Blue Moon. Uh, it's interesting because just a week or two ago, we experienced a super blue moon, one of the largest and brightest moons of the year. It'll be the last super blue moon for the next 14 years. Uh, one is not scheduled to return until the year 2037. Uh, 2037 sure sounds a lot farther off than only 14 years. Uh, but let's take a closer look at this pen, which you don't need to wait 14 years to see. Uh, this is a limited edition of 50 units worldwide. It's a variation on Narwhal's Nautilus model. Um, it is cigar shaped and made from ebonite. Uh, what's a more important feature of this pen is the exterior Arushi treatment. It has a deep blue Arushi base coat, which contains some lighter blue Arushi accents. And this is joined with other lighter accents made with platinum powder. Uh, it makes for a very nice combination. Uh, the platinum is more condensed at both of the tips as well as the middle of the pen. Um, it's really something that plays well with the light. And each angle of the pen that you uh, take a look at it really provides you with a different look that really brings the material to life. Uh, let's take a look at the parts of this pen. The top of the cap comes to a rounded point. Uh, this transitions into the semicircular clip, or you could say that it is a half moon, which would be appropriate for the theme of this pen. The barrel is straight. Uh, there is then a medium sized step down from the cap to the barrel. The barrel is then straight as well, and the end, like the top of the cap, comes to a rounded point. The cap twists off with two full rotations, and underneath is one of the highlights of this pen. It is a stainless steel number no. six nib. Uh, this specialty nib is called the cross flex, as evident by the cross like grooves in the nib. Uh, this is a nib which has been created and tuned by the Nibmeister from Regalia Writing Labs, a gentleman by the name of Ralph Reyes. Uh, there is a bunch going on here. Uh, this nib has been highly customized in order to provide a wide, effortless flex. There are portions removed from the sides of the nibs. Then there are larger grooves on both tines. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but this nib can provide a lot of flex. So much that the feed has a hard time keeping up if you take it to the extremes. Now, that's not a knock on this nib or the feed. It's tough for a feed to accommodate ink flow on a nib like this. So you just need to, we'll say, keep it under control a bit. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about during the writing sample. And here's a look at that ebonite feed. The section begins with a slight flare. It angles up a bit until you reach the cap threads and a medium-sized step up to the remainder of the barrel. 
The pen is plenty long enough to use unposted, which is a good thing because it's not designed to post. I like the fact that it just doesn't even fit on here at all, leaving you no doubt it was intentionally designed this way. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. Now this is something very interesting. The pen comes with a Pilot Con 70 converter, which is nice. Um, it has a large ink capacity, uh, larger than a standard converter, which is useful since you're going to be going through a lot of ink using this pen. Uh, the converter is the pump kind, so you press down on the button rather than twisting a piston. So this means that if you would care to use cartridges, then they will need to be a Pilot branded ones. Um, with the lack of metal on this pen, if you utilize the appropriate amount of silicone grease, then eye dropping uh, should work just fine. The Ikaku Lanyu is available from a number of retailers and sells for $800. Like I mentioned previously, this is a limited edition of 50 units, so it might take some searching to find a retailer who still has stock available. Uh, it's a beautiful looking pen. The Arushi treatment has some understated classiness to it. It's not overly flashy. And while this pen is rather expensive, uh, some of that value is also contained in the highly customized nib. Uh, is this pen something that's for me personally? Unfortunately, no. While I like the looks of the pen, flex writing is not something I generally look for in a pen. However, if you are in the luxury flex pen market, then this is a very interesting offering. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Narwhal for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a very flexy writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Narwhal Ikakuku Lanyu. Um, wanted to give you another closer look at all of the spreckles that are on there and how it's condensed more in the middle and towards the ends and then here in the middle it's really hard to see but it is some more blue flakes in here and it really is going to vary from pen to pen. But in regard to some size comparisons and some other Narwhal models, uh, this is what it looks like with an original demonstrator. Uh, then this is an original demonstrator plus, which is a uh, vacuum filler. Uh, and then here it is with a Nautilus. In regard to a couple of other pens, uh, here it is with a Narwhal Horizon Twilight. Uh, and then a Pilot Custom 823. Uh, and then finally, a pen that I think this one looks a lot like, uh, which is the uh, Lamy Dialogue 3. It's just kind of a larger version of that. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the original Demonstrator and the, Hori uh, the Horizon Twilight. Uh, and then the Pilot Custom 823. So before we started the writing sample, I wanted to give you another closer look at that cross point nib. And you can see the horizontal bar across there and then the ridges that have been cut out to accommodate a higher amount of flex. But in regard to that writing sample, we have the Narwhal. And I'm just kind of doing my normal writing right here. And this is the Ikakaku. And this is the Lanyu. And you can see without much effort, it does give you a bit of flex. And this is a fine flex nib. And it is stainless steel. And the ink that I'm using is Narwhal's. Atlantic Blue. This is what the ink looks like. It's a, a nice kind of bluish green. Um, it looks very similar to the Monteverde's Iced Cookie uh, or even something like the Ferris Wheel Press Bluegrass Velvet. Oh, I smudged it just a tiny bit. Uh, this is what the Narwhal inks bottles look like. Um, that they're 20 milliliters, and so far I've found this ink to be nice.
So let's actually do uh, another kind of normal writing sample with this nib. So that's with very, basically very little effort in regard to trying to flex it. But if you decide that you want to flex this nib, it can get very thick. Now, you do have to have some control to it, like I said, because if you just try to go wild, then you're going to get some railroading to it. Uh, but that's, you know, to be uh, expected. You just have to kind of control yourself a little bit. And if you can control yourself, then you can get a decent amount of flex out of here without pushing it too far. You can start at a very fine line and you know it, you have to again use a little bit of control. If you're going too fast then you're going to get some railroading in here. In regard to ink flow, I'd say the ink flow is very strong in here. In regard to reverse writing, you're not really going to be doing a lot of reverse writing with a flex nib like this. It is a little sharp, but it actually gets the job done. In regard to some fast writing. Without much pressure, it kept up just fine. Um, but it is a pleasure to use when it comes to the flex. And like I say, you just have to have a little bit of control to it because if you push it too much, and go too fast, then you're going to get some railroading. That's because you can see how far this is actually opening up. You can see how far that's opening up. That's a huge gap that's in there. See, you can see how far that's opening up. And that does that with very little effort. So, you know, I don't think that you're at risk of, um, uh, of springing these tines. You just have to use a little bit of control when you're doing it. And if, if you use a little bit of control, then it works out very, very nicely. So there we have the Narwhal Ikaku Lan Yu. Um, I think that this is another interesting option uh, in the Narwhal lineup. Uh, this is a limited edition of 50 pens, so if it's something you're interested in, I hope you're able to find one. Uh, and especially if you're into flex writing, then this nib is something that I've enjoyed playing around with. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.